slow start back in August and September. Thought he played well against the Gophers. Thought he played really well against Purdue. So he's trending in the right direction. Yeah, and, you know, I think he's kind of taking it upon himself to make sure that this team doesn't let down and, and the defense. And there's a lot of those guys. But he said, you know, again, the energy has been uh, really great, uh, you know, leading into – you know, throughout this entire week, it's been a lot of energy, and um, you know the uh, the black shirts again are are fired up to you know make a statement and to show that they are one of the best defenses, not just in this conference but in the country. If you can slow down an Ohio State offense, I mean that that would be some kind of statement. And so they're they're not scared, you know, they're excited for it, and you know they're they're by no means folding up the tent and ready to go just because they lost a game that they shouldn't, you know, and a lot of people thought that they shouldn't have on Saturday. They they have they know that there's a lot of good opportunities ahead of them. The Buckeyes have as good a receiving core as there is in the country with Wilson and Olave. Those two are just tremendous football players. I could not believe Olave came back. Senior, I thought for sure he would put his name in the draft last year. He didn't. He came back. And they're benefiting from that. They have a lot of weapons. I don't think they're quite as good defensively as they've been in the past, but they're really good on the offensive side of the ball. And, be a challenge. and they've figured some things out. They, they had some young talent that they – some really good young talent that we're kind of figuring out how to play this college football thing early, which is what we were talking about last night when those college football playoff rankings came out. I think Oregon's probably getting a little bit too much credit for that win because um, Ohio State wasn't the team that they are now that they were the Oregon beat, so, but they've absolutely figured it out now. But they did have some a little bit of a, maybe a slower start I guess uh, to the season but now that they've kind of got things figured out they're rolling. Are you surprised how much heat the committee has gotten for those rankings? I know because there's going to be like five more before the ones that really count but man they have been beat up for the last 24 hours. Yeah but there's a lot of people upset about the Cincinnati ranking I saw you know I saw uh, obviously coming from Oklahoma there was a lot of Oklahoma people that were honestly they were kind of I think glad because maybe it will uh, fire up the Oklahoma Sooners and make them a little bit put a chip on their shoulder a little bit um, uh, you know definitely a lot of fans thought that they should be higher but I think you know again it's just and we see it every single year it just changes so much there's still so much to unfold and it's all about the TV ratings right and you know, obviously you get a sense of where teams are, but, you know, there's still so much to unfold. Somebody is going to get upset. Somebody's going to get knocked off, and there's going to be so much change, you know, from those initial rankings. It, it happens every single year. So, to me, I don't get caught up on it. But, yeah, there were a lot of people that were pretty um, frustrated with some of, the, some of the rankings last night. That's a good point. There's so much football to be played, they're going to get shuffled around a little bit. I, personally, I think Michigan State's getting a little bit too much love. And maybe that's just because when we got on a plane in East Lansing to fly back, I'm, I was convinced Nebraska was the better football team. Didn't win, so they got, they got it done. But number three in the country for them? There's still a lot hmm. of love, you know, again, for Michigan. You know, so I feel like they got a lot of – Michigan State's getting a lot of credit for beating Michigan. And um, even though that was at home, you know, I, I don't know – I. I'm with you, maybe third, it's third, they're third, they're right? Third. That's, that's pretty high. I I mean, Oregon to me, and I'm not high on Oregon, but I think Oregon is probably deserved a higher ranking than Michigan State. Oregon Cincinnati did, would be above Michigan State in my eyes. Because Michigan State hasn't played anybody besides Nebraska. The, their two biggest tests have been Nebraska and Michigan. Right. They did win at Miami, and my, but Miami was a mess when they played them in September. Miami's playing a little bit better right now. But they played, uh, they played the Huskers at home. They played the Wolverines at home. So they really haven't been challenged. They go to Purdue this week. They're only a three-point favorite. In fact, that's one of our games in the Blitz tonight is to talk about that one. They're going to have to get through Ohio State to get in the playoff. And I don't Absolutely. think they beat them. Well, and, and, you know, you talked about Miami. I think uh, Alabama's getting a lot of credit for that win. They sure are. And it's it, – was that a good win? I don't know. I mean, you know. Not early. So – and it's all about having good when you lose and who you lose to. And at this point, I think they're probably thinking Alabama had a good loss that, you know, to Texas A&M. So, and again, we'll see how Texas A&M finishes out the season. And some of these, you know, teams that, how does Stanford finish out? How bad does Oregon's loss look? I mean, again, there's just still so much to be played. I've never been one that got caught up on, you know, all of the buildup of these rankings because they change so much and there's still so much left to be played. I've never been a big playoff guy, but I'm 
trending that direction. I'm moving in that direction. And for this, for this reason, if you went to a 12-team playoff, imagine how many people get to November, what is today, the 3rd, November to the 3rd, believing they still have a shot of making the 12-team field. There'd be a ton. There'd be 25 schools that feel like we can still make that thing. We just have to win out from here on in. Yeah, oh, you talk about if it expands. If it goes to 12. Yeah, yeah. That... 25 schools ago. We, we can still make it in November. Yeah, which, again, takes a lot of the kind of emphasis on some of those earlier games away. Not it as does. much pressure. There's not as much, you know, build up to those games that happen early. Um, you know, but... Also, though, too, on the flip side of that, it might help with the scheduling in the non-conference. Maybe, you know, you see a lot of teams that don't schedule very challenge. They don't challenge their schedules very much early because they don't want to risk getting those early losses. If you can afford those early losses, maybe it would make some for some more intriguing matchups earlier in the season. Um, I'm, I'm kind of I go back and forth a little bit about it because I think we've already lost a little bit of. Um, you know, the, all the bowl season and it's lost some of its glory being that, you know, guys won't play if they're not in the college football playoff. But, you know, also, though, how can you ask these kids to play a longer season? It's already a pretty long season. And it's just, yeah, there's just there's still so much to be figured out and worked out uh, with it. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I feel like probably at this point something needs to happen to make more people want to play a little bit harder, longer, you know, to, to want to stay in, to, in that conversation, which would help with what you're just talking about. There's a lot of teams right now that would still be on that bubble that would it would make this uh, end of this stretch really, really intriguing. It's not as cut and dry about expanding as a lot of people would like to make it. A lot of people are just like, oh, do it, just do it. Well, you bring your point is, is well taken. I think you're going to have kids opt out. If they're going to go, why would I go play three more games? I'm ready to be drafted in April. Why am I going to put my body on the line where I could blow a knee and I don't get drafted or my draft I go from a second round to a sixth round, lose all kinds of money? I think you'll have a lot of people bailing if you expand to 12 and have to play three more games to get to a title. You can't add games to a season. So it's 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 going to be where maybe, you know, I just said maybe you make the non-conference more challenging. If you're the SEC, maybe you don't play any non-conference games as big as they're about to get. Right. Maybe it's just an SEC schedule. I don't know. I mean, again, it's there's still a lot to be figured out, but just saying, "Hey, we're going to 8" is not as easy as people, you know, want to make it out to be just, "Hey, let's go to let's go to 8." Right. Buckle up, put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Here's what we have on the program tonight. It is Wednesday, so we have our blitz coming up. We're going to check out what's happening at Michigan State, Michigan, and Iowa as they get ready for matchups here this weekend. Jazz Shelley, we're going to talk to her. She's the new, one of the new additions to Amy Williams' squad. She debuted on Monday when the Huskers took out Midland in their only exhibition game. We're going to hear from Jazz uh, who I, I think was an incredible addition to this team. She had a, such a good career going at Oregon. She can really shoot the basketball. I think that team needs an extra shooter. She's going to give them that element, so we'll look forward to hearing from her later on in the program as well. And we want to hear from you, 402-413-2400. That's our text line open for you to jump on with some thoughts, topics about college football or whatever you'd like to jump in about coming up next. When, we, when we're back, it's the Big Ten Blitz. That's straight ahead. The game isn't just about winning or losing. It's about the snacks they share after they've used up all their energy in the field. It's the early morning practice before school and staying late after to get a couple more kicks in. It's the pride they feel for their team and the determination to always keep improving. Sure, the game isn't always about winning or losing, but when they've won the big game and celebration is in full swing, there's only one thing left for you to do. Get them home safe. Buckle up and back. Paid for by NDOT Highway Safety Office. Well, it's halftime. How do we kill 15 minutes? I think I have some really old hard candies in my purse. Ick. Well, it could play rock, paper, scissors. I'd rather eat the hard candy. Oh, I forgot. I bought a bunch of Nebraska Lottery scratch tickets before we came. Excellent. Hand them down. What a great selection. The Nebraska Lottery launches new scratch games every month. Anybody got a quarter to scratch them with? Anybody? Hey, hand me one of those old hard candies. Play is good. Go play. Odds vary by game. At Subaru, they love building vehicles for those who pack a lot into life. The redesigned 2021 Crosstrek is their way of saying more power to you. An upgrade in horsepower means you have a world of fun and adventure waiting for you. And the Crosstrek comes with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. Love, it's what makes Subaru, Subaru. Visit Deteau Subaru at 27th Street and Jamie Lane in Lincoln or at DeteauSubaru.com. Upgraded horsepower available on select models. 
Finally, it's time to tailgate, to find your spot in a sea of red, to get together with family and fans, and to share what makes Husker football season the best. This season, share Valentino's tailgater tradition with their big red double jumbo deal and get two one-topping jumbo pizzas for only $17.79 each. Order yours at Valentino's.com. Some restrictions apply. See store for details. Valentino's, the official pizza of the Huskers. Go Big Red. Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic for better health. Why chiropractic? Because it is safe, drug-free, and a cost-effective treatment option for back and joint pain. Plus, all generations can benefit from natural chiropractic care. Choose chiropractic first for pain relief, nutrition, or to improve your mobility, athletic performance, or overall wellness. Make chiropractic your first choice for better health. Find a chiropractic physician near you at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. Lutz is an integrated business solutions firm born and raised in Nebraska with offices in Omaha, Lincoln, Hastings, and Grand Island. Lutz provides expert accounting, consulting, financial, technology, M&A, and talent solutions tailored to you. Lutz embraces your business as their own to discover the right solutions to help you thrive. They mind what matters for businesses or individuals seeking a partner to help energize and heighten financial and organizational success. Visit Lutz.us slash GBR. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. You trained for this all year. Endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. And now you are ready. Ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance, all without spilling a drop of your ice cold Bud Light. Welcome back to football, sports fans. At Jimmy John's, we don't make sandwiches. We make the sandwich of sandwiches. We use fresh veggies because we don't hate salads. We just feel bad for them. We make our sandwiches exactly how you want because you're the one who's eating it. And we bake bread all day, every day, because stale bread isn't bread. It's croutons. Sandwich history is written by the victors. Good thing we have legible handwriting. Jimmy John's, the sandwich of sandwiches. Order pickup or delivery on the app. Here we go again. The celebrating, the accolades. Ever since we added Marco to our team, our technology can't lose. Day after day, success after success, Marco's made our business IT a force to be reckoned with. The only drawback of being technology all-stars is keeping champagne away from the electronics. <sighs> Find out what your technology could be saying at marconet.com. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy Sports Bar and Grill, see you there for the game. It's game on at Sid Dillon Buick GMC Cadillac in Fremont, featuring our winning combination of Buick SUVs and GMC trucks and SUVs. And as a GMC business elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles for your business needs. For the convenient and easy way to shop for your next vehicle, just visit our Fremont location or check out our full inventory at Sid Dillon Buick GMC.com. You are what drives us, Sid Dillon. We are professional grade. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare, advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team. www.iowaworks.gov. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas. Acres solutions for every field. It's Wednesday night, still in Big Ten football season. Time for us to take a little spin around the league. We call it the Blitz. 
Big Ten Blitz, Michigan State. And here to tell us about the Spartans, Hondo Carpenter of Spartan Nation, Michigan State, with a huge come from behind win last week. That had to be really satisfying to the fan base, Hondo, to pull that one out against Michigan. Well, I'm going to tell you, if someone asked me on national radio on Sunday, what did you think of that win? And I said, you have to understand, a win against Michigan, whether it's both teams are undefeated, both teams don't have a game, it does, it's always huge. When you add to it now, they move into number three in the college football playoff, and they move up to number five in the polls. The Spartans right now are playing with house money, and, man, things are going well for them. Kenneth Walker may have uh, reserved himself a spot in New York with that performance. Where would you rank him in recent uh, backs at Michigan State? Le'Veon Bell obviously was a great one, but this guy's having a phenomenal year, Hondo. Yeah, I think he's better than Le'Veon. I would say that he's not as good as Lorenzo White who many people remember was in the Heisman hunt. Many people thought he should have won it, but lost it to Bo Jackson. And I, I, I think Bo should have won it. I'm not one of those people that felt that he should have, but um, I think he's the best back since Lorenzo White. He's got everything. He's got breakaway speed. He's got power. He has, in my opinion, I was talking to an NFL scout the other day that said he hadn't seen a back with his vision since uh, Adrian Peterson. So that says a whole lot about him. You know, Derrick Henry runs people over, but Kenneth Walker just has vision unlike anybody you've ever seen. Okay, let's turn the page. Purdue on the road this week. We just saw the Boilermakers. They were really efficient offensively against Nebraska. What Break this one down. What, what concerns Mel Tucker going into this one? I think everything. I think if they played this game ten times, Purdue would win five. So a Purdue win here will not surprise me. Um, I think this is going to be the toughest game that Michigan State's faced all year. I think Purdue is very good. I, I think, you know, the, the record is deceiving. Some mistakes have been deceiving. I think there are a lot of things. Um, first of all, they're much better coached than Michigan. I mean, geez, oh, Pete Harbaugh is just, and his staff, uh, especially on offense, are terrible. And I think this is a much better coaching staff than what Michigan has. And I don't think they have the talent, but the coaching can make the talent better. I think that's a concern is how are they going to attack Michigan State's offense because they're going to be so balanced and not beat themselves. Again, they play this game ten times. I think Purdue wins five. This, is to me, is a major trap game. I'm more concerned about Michigan State facing Purdue than I am Penn State. Well, we hear the term trap game. Has that been mentioned by, by Coach Tucker and the staff this week coming off the emotional win over your rival? I could see, and going on the road, I could see where you gotta you got to worry about the emotional tank, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's been mentioned by everybody. But in defense of Michigan State, I want to I wanna credit this. <clears throat> to me, nobody travels like the Big Red. And I've watched Nebraska on the road at several different games, and I'm just always stunned at how your fans travel. This is the first year where Michigan State fans are doing that. And it wasn't the first couple of games. When they went to Miami, it was a huge crowd. Uh, that, you know, that was a surprise. And Spartan fans, I know of one particular guy that him and about 100 of his friends bought tickets. So that, to me, I think can be, if, if that crowd shows up like I think they're going to, I think that puts Michigan State over the top. But if they don't, Man, I think Michigan State's got everything to be worried about. Michigan State at Purdue, Saturday, 2.30 Central on ABC. Hondo Carpenter of Spartan Nation. Hondo, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, friend. Big Ten Blitz. Michigan. And here to talk about the Wolverines, Angelique Shangelos of the Detroit News. Michigan coming off of a disappointing loss to their in-state rivals, Michigan State. Uh, that had to be a gut punch to that team, Angelique. What would you make of that, the comeback by the Spartans? was uh that's the description i used as i was asking one of the players the question after the game because it it certainly was and you know i think that that they are now a few days removed from that and and of course they're saying all the right things and they did have a team meeting on tuesday and it's not the first one they've had this season but just uh they wanted to reset and they kind of opened the floor it wasn't just the captain's talking whoever wanted to say something spoke and it's just about realigning and, and understanding that there's still a lot left here with, with Penn State uh, on the road in a couple weeks and, and uh, certainly the Ohio State game at the end of the season. And, and, you know, Michigan State's got a tough 
a very tough final month as well. So they're looking at all those angles and saying, look, heads up and move on. Angelique, 33 points ought to be enough. I, I was shocked that, that Sparty put that many points on the board against them to beat them. What, what about the defensive effort last week? Well, I mean, it, 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 there was a lot of confusion. It's, it's Mike McDonald's first year. We've talked about him as, as defensive coordinator, and, you know, he was trying to substitute um, even when, when Michigan State wasn't. And there was a lot of confusion among the defensive players. You could see them looking at the sideline with their hands up, like, you know, what's going on? There were a couple times that they weren't set. Michigan State got big gains. And uh, that was, you know, I think a lot of people want to talk about different issues offensively, but, but as you mentioned, they scored a lot of points, and, and I would think most people would think that, was, that would have been plenty, but th this was, to me, on the, on the defense and what they were not able to do, certainly to, to Kenneth Walker to slow him and keep him out of the end zone five times. All right, let's turn the page. This week they host Indiana. The, the Hoosiers have had just a wretched season from what they were expected to be, 0-5 in the league. Any concern? What what would concern Coach Harbaugh about the Hoosiers going into this game? Well, I, I think it's really more about Michigan and, and making sure this team doesn't have a letdown. I mean, they are the better team, and as you pointed out, Indiana has struggled. They've got quarterback issues and with injuries, and you know, the, the uh, Ron Bellamy, the, the safeties coach, spoke to uh, media this week and and talked about preparing for three quarterbacks, not knowing for sure. But I, you know, I think we know who we're going to see and. Um, when, when Indiana trots out. And, you know, I, I think it's about keeping Michigan focused. And, and I think they like the fact that it's a night game, that it's, you know, there's a different energy under the lights. And, um, and I think that there is a hope in the building that that will get things going and get them back on track. Any personnel shifts, do you think, from Coach Harbaugh, or does he just keep rolling with what he's been doing? Well, I think, you know, you saw Andrew Anthony, the freshman receiver, really have a huge game with the two tech touchdowns against Michigan State. He's a guy who has been coming on and coming on, and, and finally they've worked him in, into the offense. I think he's going to be someone you see a lot more of. Eric Alder, tight end, has, has been targeted a lot the last three weeks, really since the Nebraska game. And uh, he limped off the field at the end of the game. Um, it's, you know, sort of unclear what his status is this week. It sounded like uh, he went through a little bit of practice on Tuesday, but he's a guy who has really, really been a, a factor for them in these last few weeks. And uh, but I think otherwise they they stick with what they what they've been going with. And and obviously that was not a good game from Blake Corum on Saturday either. Um, everyone's talked about thunder and lightning, you know, Hassan Haskins and Blake Corum, but but he was not. Uh, it was just not his best game. But there won't be any major changes. Definitely not not uh, going into the Indiana game. Wolverines host the Hoosiers, 6.30 Central on Big Fox. Angelique Shengatos of the Detroit News. As always, we appreciate it. Thank you. My pleasure. Big Ten Blitz, Iowa. Here to tell us about the Hawkeyes, Scott Docterman of The Athletic. Iowa coming off of a loss at Wisconsin 27-7. That's back-to-back -back game, Scott, with uh, not much offense for the Hawkeyes. What's, what's the trouble? What, what are you seeing? An offensive line and outside of Tyler Linderbaum, they've really struggled there. They've had, uh, you know, there's, there's semblance of injuries and also some inexperience, but the players not playing up to their abilities or at least what they need them to play. So they're struggling in the running game, which is really devastating for this offense. I mean, they rank uh, right now 120, 30 yards per carry. That's not going to get you anywhere in, in college football. And then you, you couple that with a fairly, you know, a decent at times passing attack. And uh, that, that's the problem because they've got an outstanding defense and they've got a, a, an elite level special teams unit. But when you can't score, you can't move the ball, then you're putting a lot of pressure on those units to come through and, and force turnovers. And sometimes it just doesn't happen that way. Can they fix it midseason or, or how, how can they get better at that at this stage of the season? I don't know if fix it's the right word. I think it's beyond that. And I do think it's kind of like squeezing the last couple drops out of that ketchup bottle. Which is just <laughs> figure out what works, try to run with that. And that, that could be, uh, you know, a style of blocking. It could be, you know, honing in and shoring up the playbook a little bit, uh, you know, putting two tight ends on the field and, and letting Tyler Goodson run behind them because he's an outstanding running back. And, and they've got, you know, three or four, terrific players nfl caliber players on that offense it's just kind of the, the gaps are so wide in certain areas that they've got to make sure how to protect 
their quarterback better, and then also just how to execute. And I think it's, it's I think it's probably too far gone to fix at this point. Let's let's flip it to Saturday. They go to Northwestern. These two have had just an unbelievable decade of football games. Uh, crazy finishes. How, how do you see this one playing out on Saturday? This is a different Northwestern team, as we know, than what we've seen in the past. I mean, they've been known for their great defenses and, uh, you know, really smart execution on offense. And, and really, they haven't been very good in either area this year, but particularly on defense, which is kind of a surprise. They lost a ton of great players from last year's divisional championship team. And, and they happen to really be terrible in the areas where Iowa hasn't executed on offense. And so I think in some ways this might be a get-well game for Iowa. I, I shudder to say that because at times – that's backfired immensely for Iowa against Northwestern, but but you're talking about a team that averages that's 126 against the run, that's uh, you know just 116th of passing completion percentage. Those are areas Iowa is low in, so Iowa has a chance to execute offensively, and then couple that with a you know, Northwestern's offense isn't real good, and Iowa is it is very good. So I think this is an opportunity for Iowa to get back on the right path and and really kind of look forward rather than what's been ailing them the last couple of games. Yeah, with, with all those ails, they still have a, a real shot to win this division. I'm sure Coach Ferentz has mentioned that numerous times to his team this week. Yeah, he has. But he's also tried to lay off that and just say, let's, let's look at this game individually and then worry about the big picture later on because they do have those opportunities, as you said. I mean, they can if they win out, um, you know, you would need some sort of tiebreaker faction because now they're tied with Wisconsin, which beat them. But, but that said, uh, you know, even then you'd be 10-2 and and you'd feel pretty good about the way the season turn around. But I, I think right now they, they've got to worry about what's in front of them. Uh, you know, they won 12 straight games, but then they lost the last two, and they went from number two in the polls to now, you know, debuting at number 22 in, by the college football playoffs. So they don't feel real good about themselves right now, and they need to get back on that track uh, as we hit November now. Hawkeyes, a night game at Evanston. It'll be at 6 o'clock Central Time on BTN. Scott Dockerman of The Athletic. As always, we appreciate it. Thank you, Scott. Big Ten Blitz. Scott and all of our contributors appear with us on our Sports Nightly Hotline brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations, simplified car buying to save you time. Shop, finance, and buy online at woodhouse.com. All right, uh, when we come back, conversation with Jazz Shelley, Husker women's basketball player who made her debut in a Husker uniform a couple of nights ago, and they took on Midland in their exhibition game. We'll have that conversation next. You could win a 2021 Ford F-150 XL four-wheel drive Super Crew truck from the Woodhouse Auto family this season. If the Huskers return the first or second half opening kick for a touchdown, Woodhouse will give away an F-150. New contestants will be chosen each week. For details on how to enter the Woodhouse Auto family kickoff contest and official rules, go to woodhousekickoff.com. That's woodhousekickoff.com. Valley 365 is here, and the time is now to take your farming technology full circle. Valley 365 is the ultimate command center, the new single sign-on platform that brings together our tried and true technology and streamlines your entire operation. Combining the best features of AgSense, Valley Scheduling, Valley VRI, and Valley Insights, Valley 365 is the next-level solution for connected crop management. Leverage your data, make the most of your time, and own your tomorrow. Contact your Valley dealer today. Don't let the cold winter worry you. As Nebraska's leading supplier of propane, you can count on Sap Brothers to keep your family warm this winter. You're like family, and your safety is the number one priority of Sap Brothers. When it comes to your propane needs, Sap Brothers has you covered. Visit www.sapbros.net slash petroleum to find your local Sap Brothers propane expert. Celebrating 50 years of fueling America's heartland and welcoming guests, Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Husker Athletics. Much like the values of the people of Nebraska, Nebraska Realty was built on the principles of hard work, dedication, and doing things the right way. They believe strongly in the power of creating lasting relationships and the value those relationships hold. Their success is based on trust and the relationships created with the people and communities they serve across the state of Nebraska. There really is no place like Nebraska Realty. While some seed companies put a greater stake in stock prices and anonymous shareholders, Rob Seco knows that what's important to you hits closer to home. That's why you'll find we're focused on your needs. 
with a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, a relationship that makes it easy to connect with anyone in the company, and the technology, traits, and genetics you need from any source. Put your stock in the company that puts you first. Rob Seco. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. The Rural Fellows Program doubled their average number of participating students this year, putting UNL student interns to work in 17 Nebraska communities for the summer. Interns use their skills to get real-world experience on a variety of projects, from mapping out trail systems to creating promotional videos to researching and documenting local history. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. From sprains and stitches to sore throats and sinus infections, when it's care that can't wait, count on CHI Health Clinic Priority Care. Simply walk in seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You'll get the quality care you need without an appointment, and you'll never pay more than a regular primary care visit. Get in, get out, and get on with your day. Find a location near you at chihealth.com slash priority care. If you're doing business in Nebraska, the best way to connect your organization with the excitement surrounding the Huskers is through a partnership with Nebraska Athletics. You can take your business to the next level by reaching loyal Husker fans through in venue signage, digital and social media, radio advertising, and more. Got it! Join the Husker team today and email partners at huskers.com to learn more about opportunities to connect with Husker Nation. That's partners at huskers.com. You could win a 2021 Ford F-150 XL four-wheel drive Super Crew truck from the Woodhouse Auto family this season. If the Huskers return the first or second half opening kick for a touchdown, Woodhouse will give away an F-150. New contestants will be chosen each week. For details on how to enter the Woodhouse Auto Family Kickoff Contest and official rules, go to woodhousekickoff.com. That's woodhousekickoff.com. When you choose Woodman Life, you choose a better life insurance company. Yes, Woodman Life is life insurance, but so much more. Woodman Life is here to protect your family's financial future and offer help when the going gets tough. And Woodman Life is honored to join you in the celebration of family, community, and country. Get to know Woodman Life at woodmanlife.org. Woodman of the World Life Insurance Society, Omaha, Nebraska. Here is a before winter to-do list from JTEC Construction. Let's start with windows. Triple pane window technology has saved homeowners countless dollars on heating and cooling bills. Siding serves a crucially important purpose, protecting your home and insulating it from adverse weather conditions. And don't forget about your roof. Designing your roof should be simple and painless, and JTEC offers several payment plan options. One more thing on your to-do list called JTEC Construction, the official exterior experts of the Huskers. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy Sports Bar and Grill, see you there for the game. This season, share Valentino's tailgater tradition with our big red double jumbo deal and get two one-topping jumbo pizzas for only $17.79. Each order yours online at valentinos.com. Valentino's, the official pizza of the Huskers. Go Big Red. 402-413-2400, the number to dial us up with a comment or question or fire off a text. Got a few more minutes here with us, and then we'll hand it off to Matt Cotney, Amy Williams, our first women's basketball show of the year. The Huskers had an exhibition game Monday. And afterwards, you had a chance to talk to uh, Jazz Shelley. I think she's going to be a nice addition to this basketball team. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. We had heard a lot about what she's going to be able to provide for this team. And, you know, doing a little bit of everything, shooter, she can pass. And I just, I've been really impressed at how um, 
well liked and how well accepted she is. A little bit like Alonzo Verge, it's not easy to come in, especially at the point guard spot. We heard Coach Hoiberg talk about the other day and kind of, you know, immediately kind of be so welcomed by a team, but she seemed to just to be really liked in the locker room too. So I uh, got a chance to chat with her after her debut inside PBA. Hey, well, first time out here in PBA, back in front of a crowd. I know you didn't play in front of this crowd last year, but, I mean, how good did it feel to kind of see somebody new today? It's incredible. I mean, we haven't played in front of fans even when at my old school in a really long time. So it's, it's such a different atmosphere, and it's incredible. What did you guys kind of want to take into today and take away from today, uh, moving in, in the one exhibition game before you start the season? Yeah, we definitely had key things we wanted to work on today, like boxing out, pushing in trans, just little things. And I think that we honed in on them and we did really well. There's still a lot to improve on, but we were heading in the right direction. Big debut for you. I mean, you shot the ball well. How did you feel out there? It was awesome. I felt confident. I was excited to play with my team again. It's just really more excitement out of anything to get out there with my teammates and just play. You, you shot the ball well, but uh, as a team, you guys didn't shoot as well as I know what you're going to shoot uh, on, on most given nights. Uh, but you found other ways to score. How yeah. important was that, that when the three wasn't going, that you guys are finding other ways to get on the scoreboard? Yeah, that's the thing, because our team can really shoot the ball. So not even being able to hit our three-point shots today, we're, we're looking really good this season. But it was awesome for our bigs to lock in and get points in the paint and kick out threes, and we're still working. So. Everybody scored. I know this is a really deep team. A lot of a lot of players going to contribute, but everybody scored. You have four players and double figures. How important is that too to have multiple people that can contribute? Yeah, we got a lot of bodies on the bench, but we're deep. Everyone can really come in and play this, do their thing, and uh, be a spark for us. So I think everyone did that individually pretty well today. Lots of steals that you guys converted, 25 points off of uh, their turnovers. Uh, what was the key to that to kind of, again, um, I guess, uh, capitalizing on, on those steals? Yeah, that was definitely something we wanted to work on before the games, getting up in the lanes and really pressuring them, um, put, them on our back, uh, put them on their back foot. So we did really well with that, and we were able to finish at the other end, so that's important. And then what's kind of next for you guys is you, you got the exhibition game in the books, and then you get ready to set, uh, open up the season. You got some tough opponents on the yeah. schedule. Go back to training. I mean, work on what we need to work on and go back out November 9, November 9, and play our first game. So, How excited are you for this team and for these fans to get to see this team this year? We're going to be great, so I'm excited. And just, I mean, you talked about this being in this building in front of these fans, and uh, I mean, how cool is that to have this kind of support? And, and I know you guys are going to get even more support as the season goes. Hosco fans are incredible. We really felt it today, so I'm excited for the rest of the season. Can't wait, and uh, I think we should keep doing a lot of interviews with her. The, that Australian accent uh, <laughs> never kind of gets old, it. right? Is he born, too? Ruby Porter, let's get those Aussies yeah, in as have, much as we can. You have options with, with, <laughs> that, with that accent with all three of them. So she's going to be a nice addition to this team, give them an outside punch. Sam Hybe was limited, I guess, the other night. She was had a class, got there a little late, but... It was Midland and Yeah, Tuna. and we've seen what Sam Hyvie can do. Right. But, you know, and we've heard and, and have talked a lot about uh, what Jazz brings. She's a, a player that has been with the team and made a run in the NCAA tournament. And so bringing mm -hmm. kind of that to this team is big, That getting that experience and being able to bring that to, in addition to just everything else that she's been able to do. But I think she's even, as good as she was coming in, I think she's even improved a lot. And, and just talking with her, being able to play for the Australian team and the World Cup team, I mean, it just really makes you grow as a player. So I think even as good as she was even at Oregon coming in, I think she's even a better player stepping on the court this year. It's going to be fun to watch this team. They open the season Tuesday at noon against the Maine Black Bears. It's a doubleheader day. The women are playing at noon. The men are playing at night. Then they come back and play Thursday night at 7 against Prairie View A&M. It is time to go uh, for hot basketball season for both the Husker men and women. Looking forward to watching that team. And again, Amy Williams coming up at the top of the hour. There's a couple of doubleheader days. There are. It's fun. Yeah. I love that. You know, and we've got a lot of conflicts with, like, we've had one already with men's basketball and volleyball going on, both in town, but different venues in town. And so... It's just a busy month. A lot of things happening. Yeah, November's fun. Uh, that weekend of the Iowa game, of course, uh, the football plays Friday, and then you turn right around the next day, there's a men's basketball uh, game, and then the women, I think, are playing in a Thanksgiving tournament that weekend. So there's – and then volleyball will be in action, I think, as well. So it, that that's a busy weekend from here on out. Um, you know, after we, we tip this off on November 9th, from here on out, every single weekend is going to be just crazy. Jam-packed with stuff. So, yeah, women will play again Maine noon on Tuesday. Uh, for their opening game of the year.
All right, need to step aside, get a break in. Phone lines are open for you if you want to jump on with a thought, comment, or question. 402 413 2400. Time to tell you to buckle up, put that phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Back with more Sports Highly next. Isn't it about time to add a new piece of Husker gear to your closet? Check out the new 255 collection, inspired by the legendary coach Tom Osborne. With the mission to connect style with Nebraska pride, 255 was designed with the fan in mind. From Hastings to Lincoln, coach to statesman, leader to legend. Thomas William Osborne, it's all in the name. It's all in the numbers, 255 wins. This is TWO55. Get yours today at shop.huskers.com or other participating retailers. For more information, visit huskers.com slash 255. Walk these fields for 85 years. Grow deeper roots here. Know what thrives here. Bring in world-class genetics and innovative traits like chrome triple-stack corn hybrids and Enlist E3 soybeans. Refine it through pure local know-how and expertise. Do all of that, and the only thing left is the right seed. Hogemeyer. Learn more at therightseed.com. You always dreamed of owning your own farm. Now you're living your dream, and it's time to pick the tractor that makes it all come together. Massey Ferguson has reinvented what compact and utility tractors can be and redefined what they do, making them easier to operate, more comfortable to drive, more versatile than ever. Massey Ferguson gives Nebraska farmers the power and performance to win in the field. MERS Farm Equipment in Falls City, Nebraska. www.mersfarmequipment.com Valley 365 is here, and the time is now to take your farming technology full circle. Valley 365 is the ultimate command center, the new single sign-on platform that brings together our tried and true technology and streamlines your entire operation. Combining the best features of AgSense, Valley Scheduling, Valley VRI, and Valley Insights, Valley 365 is the next-level solution for connected crop management. Leverage your data, make the most of your time, and own your tomorrow. Contact your Valley dealer today. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. At Jimmy John's, we don't make sandwiches. We make the sandwich of sandwiches. We use fresh veggies because we don't hate salads. We just feel bad for them. We make our sandwiches exactly how you want because you're the one who's eating it. And we bake bread all day, every day because stale bread isn't bread. It's croutons. Sandwich history is written by the victors. Good thing we have legible handwriting. Jimmy John's, the sandwich of sandwiches. Order pickup or delivery on the app. Score a game-winning drive when you buy your next vehicle at Sid Dillon Chevrolet. As a Chevrolet Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles, including medium-duty trucks and low-cab forwards. Whatever vehicle fits your needs, we're here to make the purchase process easy. Visit our Chevy locations in Blair, Crete, Fremont, or Wahoo. Plus, shop our full inventory at SidDillonChevy.com. Drives us Sid Dillon. Chevy, find new roads. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas, Acres Solutions for every field. Phone lines are open. We have time if you want to jump on board with a thought, comment about anything in the sports world, 402-413-2400. I believe I said last night when we were wrapping up our show, the Braves were going to finish it off last night. Boy, did they. They hammered Houston last night. Yeah, it wasn't even uh, an exciting, you thought maybe you'd get an exciting, dramatic-filled win, but no, nope. it was a, no doubter. Nope. But congratulations to Braves fans. It's been a long time coming. 1995. Yep. Last time they won the whole thing. So baseball I, is over for the year. I saw a few people that were tweeting out that were fans that were overcome with emotion crying excited it's it's been a long time so congratulations to the braves i also saw something that major league baseball has had a different winner eight or nine of the eight or nine straight years isn't that something a different team has won the world series i like that i like I that it kind too. of moves around because i think you know sometimes with the nba especially with super teams the you warriors can get the, and the yeah, Cavs for like three straight years you can get the same teams every single year and so mix it up a little bit i, I kind of like that that's a, one of those great sports debates. Would you rather have a dynasty going on, or would you like it what baseball's been where it's spread out? Because a lot of people say if it's not a dynasty, then they, they don't have interest in it. 
unless they get a team. Either you love a team or hate a team, like the Patriots dynasty. You either love the Patriots or you have despised them, and you root, you watch to root against them. Yeah, I don't know. I I I do not love dynasties, but I, so I am that person that you know, I root against dynasties. Like I did not want the Warriors to win. I, I wanted the Cavs to beat the the Warriors. You were talking about that one. That was kind of the stretch that was happening. Um, but yeah, I just I think with baseball because there are so many guys that move around and go to different teams, it's hard to kind of build right. that. And right. um, you know the super teams you don't really see. I, I feel like you know back in the day when the Yankees had so many superstars and then they all went to the Red Sox, like that that was kind of a lot of people were tuning into those games. But um, I feel like fans probably have their teams, but if you like players, it's just as you don't get locked in on one team, you know, because they move around so much. A couple of texts, was rooting for Jake Myers, but not the Astros. Yeah. Jake wasn't active, though, for the World Series. He hurt that shoulder in the ALDS against the White Sox. He was active for the ALCS, but didn't play, and they didn't, didn't activate him. And any Huskers on the Braves, well, Spencer Swellenbach was drafted by the Braves, but he was nowhere near being a big leaguer. He had surgery this summer. He was on, he's on the shelf for a couple more months, but nobody on the active roster for the Braves. But it also Jake seems, would have been. It also seems, too, with you know these teams that go on and, and make big runs, they don't stick together. It's there might be guys that flew under the radar that kind of perform big in the postseason, and then all of a sudden, you know, their their stock goes up higher, and some other team plucks them away. So that's another thing. I feel like guys that might have not been on people's radar all of a sudden, you know, have a good postseason, and then it just it's hard to keep those teams together. To your point, Freddie Freeman of the Braves mm -hmm. is a free agent. Yeah, so. so he may not even be back with them in spring training. It, and then it's just with the – you see so much movement, too, during the season with these Absolutely. teams, too. So it's it's just, yeah. it's And, and I guess with the NBA, because maybe it's you only have five guys, and but there's not – I don't know if there is as much. There's some big free agent moves, but not maybe as much right. in season. Correct. As you see with baseball. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, baseball may be headed for a strike. Their CBA is up at the end of November, and there's a lot of talk there's going to be a lockout. So baseball uh -oh. may have labor problems. Uh, we'll follow that. I hate they need that. They short the shorten the season. They, they cannot afford to just step away from the limelight for six or eight months. That, that would be devastating, I think, for that sport. I yeah, think, I, I mean, they already really need it. to be gaining some ground and figuring some things out because their ratings haven't been great, and they need to step it away and having a, a – you know, a blackout or whatever, right. a strike, that would be bad. That would be really bad for Major League Baseball. Let's head to the phone. Let's go to Maxwell and Randy. Good evening, Randy. Welcome to Sports Nightly. <laughs> oh, good evening, uh, Jessica and Greg. Hey, Randy. I, uh, you know what? I, I I tried to call in like fifth quarter or something, but there was a lot of, uh, of frustration still going on. I just wanted to uh, just give you my take on Scott Frost, Adrian Martinez. Uh, you know, I'm still drinking the Kool-Aid, but it is taking more and more Everclear to get it down. <laughs> but but I but I am still drinking the Frost and Martinez Kool-Aid. But, you know, gosh, they've been in every game this year. It's not like the end of the O'Reilly era where they're losing to Minneapolis by, to Minnesota by 45. Every game, they. in fact, the last game was probably the the most lopsided, believe it or not. I mean, I think you guys realize that. Everything else, every, all those other games were winnable. But I am old enough to remember, and I, I'm going to make a maybe a little comparison. I remember, I think it was 89, 90, 91, where um, our beloved uh, coach Tom Osborne was on the hot seat. And people were getting pretty frustrated with him because he didn't win the big ones. He couldn't win the big ones. And there was a lot of grumbling in Lincoln and throughout the state. Maybe it's time to let Tom go. He can't win the big ones. Well, we stuck it out with Tom Osborne. I hope we stick it out with Scott. And, hey, Adrian is still our guy. Harburg and Smothers, in my opinion, aren't ready. If you guys feel like commenting, I'll hang up and listen. Hey, I love the show. Thanks, Randy. No, he's right. Uh Dr. Tom went through a couple of tough stretches. His first couple of years, uh, he he tells the story, Coach Osborne does, about they were playing in the Blue Bonnet Bowl. Some of our older audience will remember that. It was at the old Astrodome in Houston playing Texas Tech. I think it was 74-75. Huskers win. And Tom said he went to a post-game uh, reception, and one of the Board of Regents came up and said, I'm sure glad you won because if you hadn't, you were going to be gone. 
I was like, holy cow. <laughs> but Randy's right, and we have about 20 seconds left, but Randy's right, in the late 80s and 90s, Coach Osborne had a hard time winning bowl games. They couldn't win bowl games, and they couldn't win big games, like Randy said, and there was some frustration. Uh, so sometimes patience can be a virtue. And then once you get one big one, it boy, rolls. it can be a domino effect. It roll. All right, tomorrow night, our football show, Coach Travis Fisher will be here hour one. We'll have a short second hour leading you into Husker Volleyball tomorrow night, our women's basketball show coming up next. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. You could win a 2021 Ford F-150 XL four-wheel drive Super Crew truck from the Woodhouse Auto family this season. If the Huskers return the first or second half opening kick for a touchdown, Woodhouse will give away an F-150. New contestants will be chosen each week. For details on how to enter the Woodhouse Auto Family Kickoff Contest and official rules, go to woodhousekickoff.com. That's woodhousekickoff.com. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. Hey Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare, advanced manufacturing, construction, IT and ag. iowaworks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team www.iowaworks.gov <sighs> Sometimes being an office printer feels like I'm competing in an Olympic sport. Thankfully, I have Marco's managed print services on my team. Marco's game plan helps me make big plays while saving big bucks. And Marco's lightning fast tech support gets me back in the game fast. <sighs> I'm up. Find out what your printers could be saying with Marco's managed print services at marconet.com.
This is the Nebraska Women's Basketball Show with head coach Amy Williams. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Huskers running. Gash Shelley down the middle of the floor. No look flip. Scoggin alone for three. You betcha. Off the assist from Gash Shelley. You want to talk about how to run transition? Watch that one on a replay, friends. Eight on the shot clock. Comes in. Block shot by Markowski. And it'll be Nebraska ball. She blocks Sam Shepard. It's great when you get a block and a turnover. Here is your host, Matt Coatney, on the Huskers Radio Network. My goodness, it sounds great to hear highlights when I was at the arena. You know? <laughs> Matt Coatney with you. This is the Nebraska Women's Basketball Radio Show. Coach Amy Williams is with us. Welcome to another season of Nebraska Women's Basketball. I told Jeff Grease the other night, when you listen to those highlights from the, from the Midland game, that it was really strange because the players had so much flow. They didn't stop. They didn't buffer. They didn't freeze up. <laughs> you know? Like, you all ran transition, and it was, like, smooth down the floors. So... Uh, it is so great to have you in studio. Is this the first time you've been in our Huskers Radio Network uh, This studios? is my first time in the studio, and it is just awesome. Something special in here. Now, people who have listened to this show for years may be aware there was a very awkward start to our Husker Women's Basketball <laughs> Radio Show relationship back your first year <laughs> when we had to go down in the Haymarket. Yeah. And... The there was a, there was a glitch in the communication yes. on on how you were you parked in the correct spot, just at the wrong angle, and we we came out of the show and and coach and, and I didn't know I didn't know you that well then yeah I know and you grabbed my arm and you're like where's my car <laughs> <laughs> and your car got towed it got towed your first first show mm, yes yes uh, that so if if you get towed here tonight. That's between you and Trev Albert, okay? <laughs> because because who are you going to have to talk to if your car gets towed out of, out of, out of this parking I know of for sure that I have a parking permit for the spot I'm parking okay. this time. Because, I, yeah. because honestly, I'm a little bit more concerned about myself than I am for your... I think you're probably going to be okay here. Yeah. Friends, we're going to take uh, your calls for the full hour with Coach 402-413-2400, 402-413-2400. Uh, I am so happy to talk to you about your team. I've enjoyed watching them in the time that I've seen them practice. They just seem happy, playing with joy. And I think the person that probably reflects that more than anybody is Michael Caton because, you know, she's had so many injury problems, uh, originally committed to Nebraska, the previous staff, and then went to Cal. And then when I see her go up and down the floor, she just is smiling. And, and I think that's a reflection of your whole team. Do you, you think your team kind of plays with some joy? Uh, I do. I do. I just am um, thrilled to see that. Uh, one of the um, first you know, core values that we really talk about and stress and emphasize um, with each team and group is love and um, it's you know the love that they have for each other and and um, you know exhibiting that in relationships but really even just their love for the game and bringing that out and um, see you know having that joy um, when they're doing what they love to do not forgetting um, why they're doing this and and why they play the game and I think this group is really uh, shows that on a daily basis they have fun in practice it's a fun group to be around and I, I just I have fun coaching them. So um, that joy, it's just, it's just, um, it's contagious. <laughs> you know, it's contagious yeah. for our whole staff it's, and for everyone on our team. Well, last year at this time, there were a lot of unknowns. We were in the middle of, and we're still in the middle of a pandemic. I'm not trying to, to put that away. But uh, you didn't start the season with um, anywhere near the non-conference schedule you normally would have. You didn't start before Thanksgiving. Uh, really right at the 1st of December is when things got going. So obviously there's differences between this past off season and what you had two years ago. So as I said, I know we're still really in, in the middle of the pandemic and, and really hopefully towards the end of it, but how close has this been to a regular off season compared maybe to last year? 
Yeah, it's been um, pretty close with just a few tweaks and adjustments. And, you know, two of our three Australians did not get to go home because of some of the COVID restrictions and travel and stuff. So, you know, that always kind of messes just a little bit with your oh, yeah. ability to kind of recharge your battery. And so, you know, making sure and ensuring that um, everybody has that opportunity kind of in your off season to, to do the things they need to do to recharge. But um, really, once we got going in, in the summer, it's been it's been pretty um, much closer to normal what we would get in a normal off season in um, in the hours and the way those were structured and how we were able to go and not seeing quite as many you know once um, our team's been vaccinated things like that you know not having quite so many interruptions where there may have been a close contact and having to have you know multiple people sitting out of practice reps you know for for longer periods of time uh, just not quite as many disruptions as we did a year ago. That's Amy Williams. I'm Matt Coatney. The phone number is 402 413 2400. If you'd like to visit with the coach tonight, you kept saying all last year, I've told my team, get comfortable being uncomfortable. And I thought you handled everything so well because you had limited numbers at time. I was kind of worried when you all went to Indiana and you stayed on the road for two games that you'd have enough people to, to put on the floor. Completely different right now, but you know, looking back on everything from last year, and you weren't the only team dealing with obstacles, but just for you personally, how difficult was it coaching a team last year with all those obstacles you had? Yeah, I mean, it was a really tough challenge. I think there's there's definitely nothing when you first get into the coaching and you're um, learning, you know, as a GA and you're, you're having mentors that are pouring into you, but there's none of them that taught me about here's how you handle uh, the obstacles that are going to come your way when a pandemic comes. I mean, there's no book about that. And if you can read all you want to from John Wooden and all the greatest, and there's no chapters that discuss how to handle uh, your team in a pandemic. And when you're having to COVID test every day, and it could be the day of a game that you have a positive pop-up and you know just things that were coming so I think um, the best thing that came out of it for me was just um, uh, handling the curveball you know really embracing that ability to adapt and um, you know we said all year last year also we do hard things and hard things came our way and I think our kids have really um, Hold that in as a part of our culture is that Nebraska women's basketball, we do hard things. We embrace it. We look forward to it. We're going to meet those hard things head on. And it's really carried into um, this season as well. Well, let's fast forward to this season because I don't want to talk too much about hard things and obstacles and yeah. all that stuff from last year. It's a very evident for me watching practice and the one exhibition game you played uh, in a win over Midland the other night that your team – is playing much more aggressively defensively. Um, and I look at that and I think, well, you've got numbers this year, you know? Um, I don't think we're, we're talking about the opposite problem you had with that Indiana trip that I brought up a minute ago. You've got depth. So the style of play you can play when you have depth is a little more aggressive. And I also think you've got the type of athlete that can play aggressively. So is are both of those reasons that I'm sensing you're playing more uh, aggressive defensively? Am I on the right track here? Yeah, I think, Matt, it's both of those things. You know, nobody in our team um, should have to feel like, hey, I need to conserve a little on these defensive possessions. I think they can sell out and really get up and, and use their um, efforts and energy to, to be a little more aggressive. But um, that and, and, and our depth and, and um, also – with Kate Kane, who's been such a staple for us defensively for the last four years in our lineup and being that shot blocker mm -hmm. and, um, you know, kind of cleaning up a lot of messes, I think that um, we're in a position now where we know that we're going to have to create some different types of defensive stops than block shots. It's going to probably have to come from deflections and tips and steals and, you know, some plays maybe a little bit away from the basket and more aggressive play that way. So um, that's been some of the adjusting we've had to just uh, losing Kate Kane as well. 402-413-2400 if you'd like to visit with the coach tonight. Okay, we are 13 minutes into the show and I've not said the word Sam Hyde. And I am kind of disappointed about that because it's <laughs> hard to talk about Nebraska women's basketball without bringing up Sam. I will never get tired 
of talking about Sam. The other day I was down here recording some things for the football broadcast middle of the day, and I passed Sam Hyvie coming into the stadium. My whole day got a lot better. I think Sam and Grace Berger of Indiana are the two most underrated players in the nation in women's basketball. Sammy, the only player in the Big Ten last year to rank among the top 15 in, in these categories, scoring, rebounding, assist. Now, that's pretty impressive because that's that's three tools right there. Before last year, you told me that the two of you had a talk and it made rebounding a focus, and she got significantly better as a rebounder, almost led the team in rebounding. So when we look at Sam Hyvie, and fans are very familiar with her, but what can fans expect to see possibly different or as a focus for Sam this year? Yeah, I mean, I think Sam uh, learned a lot from one year ago in the fact that when she took her focus off, like, oh, my gosh, I have to score, and then she would miss a couple shots, and then she'd kind of hang her head. I think she learned real uh, clearly one year ago that – uh, she has so much more value to our team than just scoring the basketball. So, um, you know, I think that well-rounded player that we saw a year ago continuing in that realm. But I think also Sam is really going to benefit from um, having a little more depth. But, you know, playing alongside um, uh, Jazz Shelley and, and having Jazz be able to create a little offense for Sam and Sam to create a little offense for Jazz. And, and you know, I think one year ago she, she really carried the brunt of that. But I think she can really benefit from uh, being able to, you know, her decision making. You know, I think may, maybe um, we talked a little bit about her field goal percentage being able to go up just with uh, decision making and, and the shots that she's taking. And, and so she's been working really hard on, um, you know, trying to practice game shots for her. And sometimes for Sam, game shots are contested shots. You know, it's hard to simulate that when she comes to the gym outside of practice on her own. Um, so she's having to play more one-on-one -on -one and, and get shots that are contested and, and those kinds of things to, to be able to focus on finishing the, the type of shots that Sam takes in games. 402-413-2400. If you'd like to join Coach Amy Williams tonight on the Nebraska Women's Basketball Radio Hour, part of Sports Nightly, and the Sports Nightly Hotline is brought to you by Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations, simplified car buying to save you time shop finance and buy online at woodhouse.com i want to talk to you a little bit about jazz shelley okay we got to hear in the first hour of sports nightly jessica cootie had a good interview with her after the the midland game but i want to talk first in terms of the transfer portal because it's a different world now um one aspect of it is you recruit a player like a jazz shelley and they go somewhere else, now that doesn't necessarily end your relationship with them because circumstances can change. Those ties can be important. Just take a look at Michael Caton, who was recruited by your predecessor and still had Nebraska as a soft spot in her heart, and now you're reaping the benefits of that. But Jazz Shelley, this is someone who was a, a clear recruiting target of yours when she was a young younger player in Australia, it would seem that the relationship you and your coaching staffs had with her paying dividends now for your team. I think some people look at the transfer portal and say, well, this player left this team, left this team. But this has really kind of benefited your team, hasn't it? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm, in Jazz's situation, I think, yeah, we had a great relationship. And um, as soon as she made the decision to not come to Nebraska right away out of high school, um, you, we wished her well and we moved on to, um, you know, the, the future of our recruiting efforts. Um, uh, I think also in her case, the fact that, you know, she had a relationship and went to and played and studied and, and um, at the Center of Excellence in Australia with Izzy and there was a pretty close relationship relationship obviously she kept pretty close tabs on our program um, during that time and and there are some things that just um, 
that have changed with that transfer portal and and you know but the 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 one thing that I don't think has changed is that you recruit a kid as soon as they make the decision that you know they're going to go elsewhere then you wish them well and uh, you move on to the players that you know really understand what it, the value is in in being at Nebraska and then um, if things change down the road then we deal with it as it comes up and and that's kind of the the best way we can handle that. After we get back from the break, I want to talk a little bit more about Jazz because I've had a lot of fans ask me about her after they saw that great performance against Midland. Our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center that we are in, sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas. Acres Solutions for every field. 402-413-2400. That's the number if you'd like to join us. Matt Coatney with Amy Williams. We'll have more of your calls and more with the coach when we return in a few moments. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information from manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. Welcome to Ag Answers, where we answer common questions related to farming and ranching. Today, we're tackling the issue of GMOs, or genetically modified organisms. GMOs may sound scary, but they're actually benefiting our environment and consumers. That's because GMO crops help solve specific problems like insects, food waste, and droughts. By selecting good traits from one plant or organism and adding them to another, farmers are safely using science to produce high-quality foods better than ever before. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's corn and soybean farmers. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. UNL has been named one of the best schools for veterans for the fifth year in a row. The ranking on the Military Times Best for Vets survey reflects the hard work of Nebraska's Military and Veteran Success Center, serving military dependents, veterans, National Guard members, active duty troops, and many Husker students in the reserves. Hello, I'm Tom Osborne. And I'm Coach Frost. Statistics prove that youth who are mentored and receive support and guidance from a caring adult show measurable improvement in academic achievement, motivation to succeed, and hope. Over the past 30 years, teammates have served more than 43,000 youth. And right now, there are more than 1,000 waiting for a teammate's mentor to visit with them once a week in school. For more information on how you can help the Teammates Mentoring Program, please go to teammates.org. And thank you for supporting our youth. Sponsored by Nebraska Crossing Fast Cash App. There's a call on the field for a quality seed specific to where you farm. Make the right call with Prairie Valley. With local research in eight regions throughout Nebraska, Prairie Valley performs with their locally specific hybrids and varieties while achieving the highest quality in yield. No matter where you farm in Nebraska, Prairie Valley has the seed for where you are. Find a local dealer and learn more about the seed for where you are at prairievalleyseeds.com. Preparation. It's the key to success on game day. And like your favorite Huskers on the field, you need to be ready right from the opening kickoff. Senex has your pregame routine covered. We've got your salty snacks, your sweet treats, ice cold beverages to wash them down, and fresh tanks of propane to fire up the grill. Fuel your fandom at your local Senex station. Husker Pride, powered locally. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Lutz is an integrated business solutions firm born and raised in Nebraska with offices in Omaha, Lincoln, Hastings, and Grand Island. Lutz provides expert accounting, consulting, financial, technology, M&A, and talent solutions tailored to you. Lutz embraces your business as their own to discover the right solutions to help you thrive. They mind what matters for businesses or individuals seeking a partner to help energize and heighten financial and organizational success. Visit Lutz.us slash GBR. 
Maddie's Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addie's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addie's. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. This year, don't just get ready, get holiday ready with Ford. And the best place to start is at your local Ford dealer. Whether you're getting out to the mall or getting off the grid, we've got a Ford SUV that's perfect for you. Or check out America's best-selling trucks, Ford F-Series. Inventory is arriving daily, so get the season started off right and get our best offers during the Get Holiday Ready sales event at your local Ford dealer. Best-selling claim based on 1977 to 2020 calendar year total sales. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare, advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team www.iowaworks.gov celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics check out what's new in Omaha which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and zone 6 in Exarban Village another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes Noddle Companies creating long-term value through community development for more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addie's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addie's. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. Hey, welcome back to the Nebraska Women's Basketball Radio Hour with Coach Amy Williams. I'm Matt Coatney. Nebraska 811 says, go dig red. Before you dig, always call or click 811 to have your utility lines marked. It's free, it's easy, it's the law. And you can visit with a coach, 402-413-2400 is the number. So I had a fan Tuesday after the Midland game. Uh, message me and said, I really wondered what we were going to do with point guard this year, and I was very excited to see Allison Widener from Humphrey St. Francis, and I thought, you know, we would really be something, but I had no idea about this transfer from Oregon Jazz. Shelly, wow, did she look good, and I think for fans who really just concentrate on your team and they don't really follow all of women's basketball, I don't think they realize what you were getting in Jazz Shelly. She hit a three. Her first shot she took, she distributed the ball, ran the floor well, got some deflections, um, and she's played a lot of international basketball, aside from what she did at Oregon. You know, I watched her play before she started college. This year she played with her Opals team uh, in the Asia Cup, the FIBA Asia Cup at Amman, Jordan. She was the only college player on that team, so, you know, she's not – like Michael Keaton, where she's, you know, a graduate level player, she's still fairly young. You're going to, you're going to get her for several years here, but she's played at, at, at a pretty high level. So that's got to be infectious for your team, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I, you know, I think somebody said to me after the game, like, it looks like the game is really slow for her. Right. Yeah. And I thought that was a pretty good observation. Like, you know, she had six assists and no turnovers and just made good decisions and hit uh, three, her first three off the dribble and some catch and shoot threes. And, you know, and she's still, you know, gaining confidence and learning our system, but she's very high IQ. She picks things up real quickly. Um, she's a fun player to play with because she makes every Everybody else around her um, better and so I think um, you know everybody on our team is really um, benefits from having you know her and her experience um, on our roster all right so she sees the floor very well looks smooth just like you said do you consider her a point guard 
a two guard, a combo guard. I mean, how do you classify Jazz Shelley in your in your system? I suppose you'd uh, classify her as a combo guard. I, you know, I think she sees the floor like a point guard. We have all the confidence you know she's thinking the game like a point guard when um, she has the ball in her hands and I maybe call a play she's looking to see should I go to this side because of personnel or should I go to this side you know maybe playing to her teammates strengths thinking the game the way a point guard thinks the game so um, that's that's special to have that but um, but also just um, the fact that she uh, is very capable. She doesn't need to have the ball in her hands to be effective, and she's very capable she, perimeter shooter. We can run her in sets where she's coming off screens and um, knocking down shots and things that typical two guards or three guards kind of do. So um, I think it puts us in a really good place to where you know we can play her with and alongside Allison Widener and oh, Sam Hybe, and you know we can have multiple you know point guards on the floor yeah. together, you know, playing the game. And I think that versatility is um, is probably why I'd classify her probably more as like a combo guard. I was pleasantly surprised the other night the way Ashley Scoggin interacted with all the guards that were in the game. She surprised me last year because all I had read about is the injury she had had in her first couple of years, Salt Lake City Community College and wherever else she had played. No way did I think she'd start every game for you last year. And you had to play her with the ball in her hand so much. But I don't think she's going to have the ball in her hands any, anywhere near as much as she did last year, which is a great thing. So how do you see Ashley Scoggins' role changing uh, for this year's team? Well, like you mentioned, I don't think she's going to have to initiate offense quite as much. And I think that frees her up to really play to what her true strengths are. And, um, you know, the kid lives in the gym. She is a gym rat. She works. Um, she has all the intangibles. The only way that a kid like that with the injury history that she has is on the court as much as she is, is the fact that she'll spend an hour every day in the training room additional on top of you know pregame postgame just doing what she needs to to take care of her body she really approaches things like a, a professional in that sense and um, just lives in the gym and and I think because of that she's real comfortable with her um, her shooting ability her ability to go off the dribble to finish at the rim the things that she works on every single day outside of practice in the gym and um, she's freed to do that uh, a lot more when she's not having to initiate offense busy with amy williams i'm matt coatney 402-413-2400 if you'd like to join the coach here on the nebraska women's basketball radio hour kind of sticking with the guards i want to get back to michael keaton just a, a bit because someone who has battled injuries galore in her career but I just think she looks good out there I mean unless you knew her history um, you wouldn't really notice that she's playing with such joy and passion as I've noted but how happy are you with what Michael is doing in terms of the role you need her to play on this team right now yeah I've been really excited um, about what Michael is bringing to the table right now and and you know people don't understand I don't think um, how difficult it was for her after sitting out for almost two straight years and then coming in here and she wasn't ready physically um, uh, health wise to be on the court so then she had to miss our entire summer off season she wasn't doing any ball handling any um, sh extra shots anything other than rehabbing her knee and then she gets cleared and thrown into the fire in an Illinois game mid mid Big Ten play. And you, you know, had to have her. Mid season yeah. Big Ten play were like sink or swim, you know, and she jumps out there and she gave us everything she had one year ago. But um, you know, the frustration that sometimes settles in when you haven't had the ability to knock the rust off with like repetitions of your shot and repetitions of ball handling and repetitions of finishing layups so um so you know she'd make a great move go to the rack and she'd maybe fin uh, miss a layup that she's used to finishing but she hasn't had the opportunity to really work through that and so i think after um, last season of her really working hard to get where uh, she was then to have a true off season to 
you know, spend some time working on some ball handling. And, and you know, she still has to be very smart about um, uh, the work that she's putting on that knee and just kind of really monitoring it. But um, the truth is, like, she's just got way more reps, way more comfort comfort in our system, way more comfort in her ball handling and her decision making and her shot selection and her, um, you know, skill sets. And that comes from, you know, just being able to do it. And, and so it's been fun to watch that as that has, um, she's gotten a true off season, she's gotten a preseason and now to watch that pay off and she's playing her role um, about as good as, you know, she could right now. So Sam Hybe had a late class the other night, and so not in the starting lineup. And I said three times, like fans, don't don't freak out. Sam, Sam had a late class, but so you started Ruby Porter in her place, and Sam was kind of hustling to make it and had to to get ready. And Ruby just looks like somebody right now who looks very comfortable in everything that's going on in her role. She brings a ton of energy, and she can do a lot of different things. Has a lot of energy on the defensive end. She seems to kind of be infectious with her energy when she's out there. She does. I think she's really been separating herself as one of those players that really is contributing on both sides of the ball. Um, you know, she's she puts in a lot of work. She was out on the court right after our post game show um, the other day, getting extra shots up. Um, she she really is working hard. I think she's been shooting the ball very well in practice situations, in live game, making great decisions. She's one of our best post feed passers. She, um, uh, but she, she's this week, you know, wearing our gold jersey in practice for, you know, the player that comes away with the most deflections and hustle plays and um, defensive rebounds and, you know, the least amount of offensive rebounds given up and, you know, things like that um, are charted and each week and we have a winner that gets to wear the gold jersey. She's wearing the gold jersey in practice this week. I think, um, you know, just shows her commitment on both sides of the ball. On our Text line at 402-413-2400. Sue says, it was so much fun to be back Monday night. It was good to be back in my seat. Your team is going to be fun to watch. Go Big Red. Okay, I, I can talk about how much fun it is to be in your seat. You know, fans have their, their season tickets and everything. I watched your Sunday practice from my seat. I had not sat in my broadcast seat since February 2020, and it was I'm just going to say almost emotional for me. I did not realize what what that was going to feel like for me. And and looking at Sue's text right there, that had to be uh, a lot of fun for you and your team to see the fans back, wasn't it? It was pretty emotional for us too, I think. And and just um you talked about the joy that it looks like our team is playing with and part of that is it comes just from Sue and uh, all the other fans being there to cheer us on and and coincidentally this week you know we've had a, a phone call with um, one of our uh, recruits for the future and you know the comments were you know geez you know there's quite a few fans there for just an exhibition game and you know that kind of thing so um, you know our recruits are paying attention and and they they know and understand how special the fan base is and you know so it affects almost every aspect of our program to have uh, to have you Sue and and the rest of our fan base you know back sitting in their seats and cheering us on and and um, it's it's pretty emotional when we return, we'll take your calls at 402-413-2400. I want to talk about the players you're returning up front, players like Izzy Bourne, players like Bella Cravens, and then we'll get into the freshmen. We've got a full hour here. And with Coach Amy Williams, Dorothy Lynch, homestyle and light and lean dressing, endless flavor abilities. We'll have more of your calls and more of the coach when we return in a few moments. It's football season. Husker Nation and Famous Daves is here to make your tailgate, house party, or get together famous, award-winning and house-smoked St. Louis-style ribs, Texas beef brisket, Georgia chopped pork, and house-made sides like our Wilbur beans, creamy coleslaw, and Dave's cheesy mac and cheese will surely tackle any barbecue craving. Visit FamousDave's.com for all your catering and online ordering needs, or come visit us at our locations in Lincoln and Bellevue. This year, don't just get ready, get holiday ready with Ford. 
the best place to start is at your local Ford dealer. Whether you're getting out to the mall or getting off the grid, we've got a Ford SUV that's perfect for you. Or check out America's best-selling trucks, Ford F-Series. Inventory is arriving daily, so get the season started off right and get our best offers during the Get Holiday Ready sales event at your local Ford dealer. Best-selling claim based on 1977 to 2020 calendar year total sales. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. What is HighBid.com? It's the online auction site for just about everything under the sun. Art and antiques, cars and coins, office equipment and furniture, toys and tools. You can find it all at HighBid.com. HighBid.com gives you access to thousands of auctions across the USA and around the world. Browse the most popular auctions, search for the exact item you want, or just explore the site. Go to HighBid.com, that's H-I-B-I-D.com, and find what you're looking for today. Your husband is pretty handy to have around. He makes the world's best mac and cheese. He's in the Tickle Monster Hall of Fame. <laughs> and he can teach anyone how to throw strikes. But a busted pipe in a basement full of water? Honey, I think we need a plumber. Is a little out of his league. That's where a homeowner's policy from Shelter Insurance comes in handy. We'll help get your house back in order and your husband back to what he does best. <laughs> See Shelter Agent Callie Shilke in Imperial and get the insurance coverage you need at the right price. You've trained for this all year. Endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. And now you are ready. Ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance, all without spilling a drop of your ice cold Bud Light. Welcome back to football, sports fans. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's game on at Sid Dillon Buick GMC Cadillac in Fremont. Featuring our winning combination of Buick SUVs and GMC trucks and SUVs. And as a GMC Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles for your business needs. For the convenient and easy way to shop for your next vehicle, just visit our Fremont location. Or check out our full inventory at SidDillonBuickGMC.com. You are what drives us, Sid Dillon. We are professional grade. Much like the values of the people of Nebraska, Nebraska Realty was built on the principles of hard work, dedication, and doing things the right way. They believe strongly in the power of creating lasting relationships and the value those relationships hold. Their success is based on trust and the relationships created with the people and communities they serve across the state of Nebraska. There really is no place like Nebraska Realty. Well, it's halftime. How do we kill 15 minutes? I think I have some really old hard candies in my purse. Ick. Well, a good play rock, paper, scissors. I'd rather eat the hard candy. Oh, I forgot. I bought a bunch of Nebraska Lottery scratch tickets before we came. Excellent. Hand them down. What a great selection. The Nebraska Lottery launches new scratch games every month. Anybody got a quarter to scratch them with? Anybody? Hey, hand me one of those old hard candies. Play is good. Go play. Odds vary by game. At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset, day by day. Donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker Athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers Athletic Fund members with your gift today at huskers.com slash donate. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. 
It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance. More than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information from manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. Hello, I'm Tom Osborne. And I'm Coach Frost. Statistics prove that youth who are mentored and receive support and guidance from a caring adult show measurable improvement in academic achievement, motivation to succeed, and hope. Over the past 30 years, Teammates has served more than 43,000 youth. And right now, there are more than 1,000 waiting for a Teammates mentor to visit with them once a week in school. For more information on how you can help the Teammates Mentoring Program, please go to teammates.org. And thank you for supporting our youth. Sponsored by Nebraska Crossing Fast Cash App. 402-413-2400 if you'd like to visit with Coach Amy Williams on the Nebraska Women's Basketball Radio Show. Matt Coatney with you. Here's a message from NDOT. Buckle up and put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Okay, so we've talked quite a bit about the backcourt, but you've got really good returners up front. We talked about Kate Kane leaving, but let's talk about who's coming back. I want to talk about Izzy Bourne first. She just emerged last year, such an important part of your team. She had to play multiple positions. She had to move her out to the three in the middle part of the season. She became a scoring threat, great rebounder, able to play wing, forward. So how do you see her role on this team this year? Because you've got a lot more depth, but she really emerged last year. So what, what do you see her role being? Yeah, I thought she had really a breakout year and did some great things and moved into double-figure scoring and, and just kind of was finding her way. And um, part of that was um, interesting because, you know, with – with all of the disruptions that we kind of talked about in COVID, there were plenty of times where we started off just saying, hey, Izzy, like, take the reps at the three. And because she's a pretty high – a high IQ basketball player is kind of playing her out of position, but can you just fill in right there for us in practice situations? And um, and that turned into we actually needed to use her in that position in 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 many games, and she was critical in our ability to win some games and several games against ranked opponents one year ago. And I thought she really embraced that. I thought we were able to take advantage of you know when she got into some smaller lineups matched up to her being able to run some things to really take advantage of that size advantage and bring her down and post her up and do some things. Um, but I think the confidence that Izzy gained with just, you know, playing in that position, having to face the basket, having to make more decisions on the move, having to pass and, and um, handle the ball a little bit more than she was used to has just helped in her development as a basketball player. And so um, we're hoping she's really going to take those uh, skills um, and just continue to grow and improve and, and really um, utilize those now um, back in her more rightful position. I want to talk about Bella Cravens. And my good friend Roger Carmichael has a phrase about people who come in and make an immediate impact. He says, she came through the door ready to dance. And that's how I think about Bella Craven. She led the team in rebounding, was relentless down on the on the block last year. And, you know, with, with Kate Keene moving on to do the graduate graduation, how does that put more of a focus on what you need Bella to do this year? Yeah, I think um, Bella has really embraced the fact that after um, after a year in our system that she feels like she can take on an even more increased role and particularly just, you know, with contributing more consistently offensively. And, and you know, there's a couple people that weren't so thrilled about Bella leading our team in rebounding because there's a little healthy competition going yeah. on between um, Sam and Izzy and Bella. They all want to lead our team in rebounding. And certainly, um, uh, you know, I'm saying that kind of tongue in cheek and wink, wink. You know, they obviously are thrilled to have Bella go chase down those rebounds, but um, her relentless pursuit uh, makes it even harder for Sam and Izzy to um, to continue to lead our team in rebounding. That's a goal they all have, and I think it's really um, a fantastic competition that we've kind of got going is is um, in that area and I think she's just elevated and raised the bar in our team standards with um, with rebounding and and we've been working with her about just discipline um, uh, with defending on the perimeter because she um, at, you know up to 
before she came to Nebraska had really just defended a lot on the low blocks. And um, she's capable down there, but now um, she's gaining confidence really to defend out on the perimeter and, and maintain her discipline with boxing out out there. So um, what a blessing to have her. She's just gained confidence offensively. We've seen her ball handling skills, her passing skills improve. And I think, you know, she's poised to have a great, a great season. When we return, we're going to talk uh, about the freshmen on this year's team a little bit and uh, wrap up our first Nebraska women's basketball radio hour of the season with Amy Williams. 402-413-2400 is the number. Stay right there. The name on the mailbox may say Smith, Myers, Baumgartner, or Johnson, but when you choose to plant with Rob Seco, it includes your name too, making you a stockholder in a company that's invested in you. With a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, relationships that bring more to the table, the technology, traits, and genetics that take on local conditions, and people with the know-how to use it. At Rob Seco, the only stockholder we listen to is you. Well, it's halftime. How do we kill 15 minutes? I think I have some really old hard candies in my purse. Ick. Well, we could play rock, paper, scissors. I'd rather eat the hard candy. Oh, I forgot. I bought a bunch of Nebraska Lottery scratch tickets before we came. Excellent. Hand them down. What a great selection. The Nebraska Lottery launches new scratch games every month. Anybody got a quarter to scratch them with? Anybody? Hey, hand me one of those old hard candies. Play is good. Go play. Odds vary by game. Inspired by the legendary coach Tom Osborne, Nebraska Athletics is proud to introduce the 255 Collection. With the mission to connect style with Nebraska pride, 255 was designed with the fan in mind. With high quality at the forefront, 255 can be worn anywhere, from sporting events and business meetings to backyard get-togethers. No matter the occasion, 255 is about feeling confident, looking good, and celebrating the remarkable coaching career of Tom Osborne. Shop now at Huskers.com or participating retailers. For more information, visit Huskers.com slash 255. Successful farmers must make good decisions every day. In pivot irrigation, the choice is simple. TNL exclusive hydraulically powered pivot irrigation systems are like no other. You get tough, reliable, and cost effective irrigation. Let TNL's 60 years of irrigation experience work for you. Call your local TNL dealer or TNL irrigation company today. TNL, like no other. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's football season. Husker Nation and Famous Dave's is here to make your tailgate, house party, or get-together famous. Award-winning and house-smoked St. Louis-style ribs, Texas beef brisket, Georgia chopped pork, and house-made sides like our Wilbur beans, creamy coleslaw, and Dave's Cheesy Mac and Cheese will surely tackle any barbecue craving. Visit FamousDave's.com for all your catering and online ordering needs, or come visit us at our locations in Lincoln and Bellevue. Welcome to Ag Answers, where we answer common questions related to farming and ranching. Today's topic, animal agriculture. There's been a lot of talk suggesting that giving up meat is good for the environment. However, livestock emissions only account for less than 4% of greenhouse gas emissions, according to the Environmental Protection Agency. Also, by reducing meat in your diet, you're missing out on all sorts of beneficial nutrients like protein, iron, and zinc. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's corn and soybean farmers. Welcome back to the Nebraska Women's Basketball Radio Hour. Matt Totney along with Amy Williams on our text line at 402-413-2400. Ruddy in Florida says, enjoying the show. Good luck to Amy and the Huskers. Go Big Red. Thank you, Ruddy, for that. Hey, our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center is sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas. Acres Solutions for every field. There's no way I'm going to get through your whole team. I'm really trying tonight. And if I don't if I don't get to everybody, we've got a whole season of shows here. But I want to talk about Alexis Markowski. And my, my good friend Debbie Antonelli, who is a national TV analyst on both the women's and men's side, when she evaluates the post players, she always talks about do they make themselves available on the block. And it seems to me that Alexis Markowski – can make herself available in numerous ways, primarily because she has got soft hands, can handle a number of different style of entry passes, bounce pass, lob pass, bullet pass. 
There were a couple possessions Monday night in which two different guards drove left lane line in transition, drew the double, and Markowski was available on that right low block. I, I don't think in the Big Ten they're going to play off Alexis Markowski, but Midland did. And then, you know, she got a bounce pass one time, and then she got a chest high pass, easy bunnies. She just makes herself available. Is that coaching? Is that did she come in with that? Is that a combination? That's got to make you pretty excited that she. I mean, you don't have to throw her one specific pass. You can get it to her in many different ways. Right? Absolutely, absolutely, and and um, she came in with that. I mean, yeah. she has a strong desire to want the ball in her hands to make herself available, whether it's relocating in a situation like that. I mean, when I went back and watched the game film, there were a couple times where I thought, ooh, that was a heck of a catch that I maybe in real time, you know, didn't even acknowledge that, you know, some other people would have, you know, maybe let that slip off their hands or out of bounds. But she made some really good catches. Um, she makes herself available. She works for 30 seconds to want the ball, like the whole offensive possession. And, um, and she just wants to win. She wants to do everything she can possibly do to help our team win. And so um, I think she's learning and she's improving. And, you know, her finishing has been a lot better the last um, three weeks than it was maybe our first few weeks. But, um, but I think we're seeing improvement. But I'd be lying if I said she didn't come in to us with that ability to catch a bounce pass, kept, catch a lob pass, to catch, you know, to go up. I mean, she's... Uh, she's very gifted in that area, and she's had great coaching, um, maybe from a couple of pretty good coaches over there at Pius, one of them being her dad, uh, yeah. kind of heading into um, her career at Nebraska. But uh, we're continuing to see great growth and improvement out of her. Well, I know Nebraska fans of high school basketball were excited to see Alexis Markowski come here and then Allison Widener. I mean, you have two players who won state championships on the Pinnacle Bank Arena floor. Widener, the third all-time leading scorer in this state, the great career at Humphrey St. Francis. And, you know, I think the thing about Allison is she doesn't have to come in here and immediately feel pressure to, to do what she did in high school, right? I mean... But, boy, she comes out there ready to play. you got to be excited about having her here. I'm so excited. And, you know, the word that kept coming up in her individual meeting with our staff, you know, talking about um, per her purpose for our team was really talking about just spark and just being a real spark for our team. And I thought she really has embraced that. Uh, I thought she, in our exhibition game the other day, came in and gave us a great spark. I thought she did an excellent job of uh, buying into what our game plans were and to, to pick up the defensive intensity. And, um, and you know, she's, she's really, um, you know, she grabbed that offensive rebound and uh, kind of out of nowhere snatched it, went right back up and, um, and won. And, you know, those types of plays are really going to spark a team. And so that's something that we need her to continue to, to do for this team. You also have Kendall Coley back. She is a freshman. She was an early enrollee. Doesn't seem like a freshman to me since I saw her play last year. But, man, I'll tell you what, when I've seen her in practice, she's got those long arms. You, you're able to play her in multiple positions. How great was it having her as an early enrollee because she's not really new to the program now? Yeah, I mean, that um, versatility that she brings to the table, and I think, um, you know, she's – uh, we still feel like she can be a more aggressive minded like offensively but when I look at the stats and she has three assists and no turnovers she's just got great instincts for the game she's got skills that um, you know put her in a position to be able to be versatile and play a lot of different places and um, she's embraced that and it's been fun to, to watch we're running out of time I could do a whole segment just on Whitney Brown I could do another segment just on Kendall Moriarty. We'll save that for another show. Um, and other players on your team that I didn't get to today. So Maine, on Tuesday, it's 12 noon. We will have it for you at 11.45 Central on many of these Husker Radio Network stations. Are you ready to do this? I'm ready. Let's go. I'm ready, too. It was so great watching you the other night. And uh, you brought out the red pumps for an exhibition game. No, that wasn't an exhibition game. Few <laughs> choice by you, Amy Williams. <laughs> hey, this has been fun. Thank you very much.
Thanks so much, Matt. My thanks to uh, everybody who texted in and listened tonight. Matt Coatney with you, and that will wrap up the Nebraska Women's Basketball Radio Show and Sports Nightly for a Wednesday night. Good night, Nebraska. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Woohoo! Business technology one, network downtime zero. Being a game-winning IT network takes hard work and an experienced technology coach. That's why our game plan includes Marco. Marco helps our entire business infrastructure perform better and score big day in and day out. With Marco's veteran experience guiding our team, every season is a winning season. Find out what your technology could be saying at marconet.com. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Lutz is an integrated business solutions firm born and raised in Nebraska with offices in Omaha, Lincoln, Hastings, and Grand Island. Lutz provides expert accounting, consulting, financial, technology, M&A, and talent solutions tailored to you. Lutz embraces your business as their own to discover the right solutions to help you thrive. They mind what matters for businesses or individuals seeking a partner to help energize and heighten financial and organizational success. Visit Lutz.us slash GBR. Much like the values of the people of Nebraska, Nebraska Realty was built on the principles of hard work, dedication, and doing things the right way. They believe strongly in the power of creating lasting relationships and the value those relationships hold. Their success is based on trust and the relationships created with the people and communities they serve across the